You are listening to Living with ADHD and CPTSD, available on Apple Podcasts and other podcast platforms. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Living with ADHD and CPTSD. Today, we're going to talk about safety in CPTSD, the importance of feeling safe. It is a very, very important thing when it comes to any kind of trauma, CPTSD or PTSD, which is a more common trauma-related disability that we all face. And the thing that we need to understand when it comes to safety is in order for a person who has, whether it's post-traumatic stress disorder or complex post-traumatic stress disorder, is we need to feel safe in order for the ability to heal and to get take step by step in order to get closer to feeling better and feeling healed within our system and with ourselves and when you're in a situation whether it is a relationship or you're in a job or you're in a like a work environment that makes you feel unsafe and you'd have a trauma related um, disorder it's very difficult to do your job or be in the relationship or have friends that you hang out with on a regular basis if you don't feel safe because you are at much greater risk or you have a risk of always feeling uh, triggers and having flashbacks into trauma from your past and it is if with without that sense of safety life is nearly impossible to control and to be able to do properly because you can't you can't do your job you can't be in a relationship or you can't do daily activities and take care of yourself if you're always under a sense of fear and you're always having triggers due to you know past issue past traumatic events and you're feeling triggers all the time you need to feel safe in order to have any set any ability to to restore and to have a healing you know to heal your system it's i'm going to read some information here that is i feel is very helpful and i hope that you will be able to take a lot out of this or from this and you know make maybe it'll make you feel a better sense of what it takes for you to feel safe what kind of steps you need to gain that that feeling and that ability to have that sense of safety okay experiencing a traumatic event can be one of the most life-changing or life-shattering things we go through Any event that triggers a fight, flight, freeze response has the potential to flip our lives upside down. (coughs) Excuse me. When a single event is exponentially increased, along with repeatedly feeling fight, flight, freeze, you can find yourself at risk for developing complex post-traumatic stress disorder, CPTSD. There has been long-standing controversy surrounding CPTSD, since Dr. Judith Lewis Herman first proposed it in her clinical research at Harvard in 1988. As of today, the DMSV does not officially recognize CPTSD as a separate or unique disorder from PTSD because of its overlapping behavioral system symptoms with borderline personality disorder. However, the ICD-11, which is scheduled to launch in January 22, 2022, does recognize the disorder and is said to be included in its newest edition. Granted, while there are shared behaviors among BPD and CPTSD, which can include several severe trust issues and an inability to feel safe, there are several distinct differences separating the two disorders. For example, 
Those with BPD commonly report experiencing frantic efforts to avoid abandonment, unstable relationships, a limited self-identity, and impulse behaviors, of which are not commonly reported in those with CPTSD. More common to those symptoms of CPTSD are avoidance behaviors, such as avoiding relationships and intimacy, there, these are oft, because these are often seen as threatening and increase a sense of feeling unsafe. When our sense of safety fails, life has an insidious way of lulling us into a false sense of security and then pulling the rug out from under us when we least expect it. In a moment's notice, a kid can go from trusting their mom or dad to running and hiding out of survival mode. When a child's basic need for safety is violated or was never provided for them, they learn that monsters are real. They can't run from the monster under the bed or in the closet because they live with them. Many times there's no one for a child to reach out to for help, so they learn to fend off the monsters by themselves. When a sense of safety goes sideways in childhood, we become stuck on the, that rung of hierarchical ladder. We can't advance. No collecting 200. We can't trust others or ourselves. We question our intuition. We doubt our instincts. We call bullshit on them. We never feel safe. We live in a perpetual state of anxiety and we learn to believe that everyone has an agenda. Because trust issues can start in childhood from abusive, negligent, and inconsistent environments, when a sense of trust is shattered, so is safety. We can't be expected to feel safe anywhere if we can't trust a situation or the people in it. Fast forward into adolescence and that same abused kid may now be angry, volatile, may avoid socializing, or may choose to run with the wrong crowd. Continue fast forwarding into adulthood and survival mode become ex becomes exhausting. We may turn to self-medicating, self-sabotaging, or continue fending off the monsters from our past in order to feel safe, yet never feeling any safer. Some may look for someone to save them, others may throw in the towel and revert to isolation. Because it's safe. So, how can we learn to authentically feel safe again after trauma? Rebuilding our sense of safety. A sense of safety has to begin with being able to trust ourselves as safe. One thing we tend to do is look outward as, at others to fix us or protect us. The irony is that those who've suffered extensive or prolonged trauma tend to do one of two things. Either avoid everyone as unsafe, which causes further isolation, or we turn to those who prove toxic and untrustworthy, which causes further isolation. See the conundrum? Learning how to identify feeling safe while purging feeling threatened or unsafe is a process, often defined by stages or steps. It can happen immediately, and it doesn't happen quickly. If we've experienced a prolonged threat to our sense of safety, we have to rewind back to the first events that triggered us feeling unsafe, and then take small steps forward from there. For example, if our baseline is a constant fight-flight-freeze feeling, we're starting at ground zero. We may not know what safety even feels like, let alone how to move to that space of feeling safe. We have to honor our starting point and allow ourselves time to grow as we heal. Time alone. While time alone after trauma is necessary to begin healing, we can't live there. It can become too comfortable pushing others away and living inside the walls of our self-imposed box because it's safe. Unfortunately, avoiding life doesn't help us heal. It perpetuates the effects of trauma because isolation feels off of itself. The more we isolate out of a need to feel safe, the further down the rabbit hole we go in isolation. Establish a daily routine. There's safety and predictability in a routine, as long as the routine is healthy and promoting growth. For those who've experienced severe trauma, a daily routine is necessary to help us relearn who we are and who we were pre-trauma, so we can get back to being that person. Notice your morning routine, your daily habits, what makes you smile. Notice how you react when your cell rings, when your significant other significant other calls you or when a friend wants to meet up. Notice how you feel if you divert off of your routine one day. Do you feel anxious? Do you feel unsafe? 
How do you re redirect yourself back to feeling safe again? Embrace these things about yourself and journal your thoughts and feelings as you go. Be selective. It's okay to be selective on who you give your time and energy to, especially when you're actively healing. When we're focusing on learning a sense of safety, we can become hypervigilant on those who we let in and who we dismiss because having a sense of safety includes boundaries. If we haven't had solid boundaries before, now is where we typically establish firm ones. As we become more comfortable with self-trust, we become more comfortable in making healthier choices for ourselves and conquering our chosen boundaries. Red flags are no longer red flags, they're deal breakers. Have a support group. This often means a combination of group therapy, individual therapy, and trusted family or friends. When we're healing from trauma and desperate to feel safe again, or maybe for the first time ever, it's important, even necessary, that we have a secure base. This may be an, a sibling, an old teacher we felt comfortable around, a mentor at school, a significant other, or a friend. Trauma groups support Trauma support groups and individual therapy can also be an excellent resource for helping a person move past traumatic fears and emotional triggers and to help provide insight on identifying safe and unsafe situations from a more objective viewpoint. All right, so let's discuss some of that right now. We, when we're feeling this, the trauma, whether it is... Um, doesn't really matter what really we're feeling, whether it's physical abuse, mental abuse, neglect, um, emotional abuse. Um, it all of it is going to over, especially when it's over a repeated time, as complex CPTSD is. It really takes away our feeling of being safe. Like we don't, we're not going to feel safe when we're around that person or people who are repeatedly you know, treating, mistreating us, verbally being abusive, hitting you, um, you know, emol neglecting you, not, not giving you what is required for you to be, to able to survive, especially if when you're a child, you don't have the ability to take care of yourself, which is the w normal way things are when we are children is that we do, re we rely on uh, a parent or parents or a guardian of some sort to look after us so that we can have food, have shelter, get her, you know, get proper sleep, get exercise and be social. And w clearly without all of that, you're going to have that sensation that this is not a safe environment to be in. And in order to gain that sense of safety, you have to protect yourself. You have to do things and act or act a certain way in order to be to maintain that and eventually and a lot of people hopefully at one point will get away from the abusive person or partner or group and they don't necessarily heal because well they actually don't heal because they are they're going on with their life and the the triggers that come up throughout daily day-to-day -day life or significant events they don't they don't always necessarily appear right away and then there's a significant situation in your life down the road where suddenly that event triggers you into feeling that that flashback of your trauma and you again are not feeling in a safe environment so you feel scared you're feeling that severe trauma that flashback that makes you feel in danger and if your child parts come online then they're obviously going to they're coming online to save to try and protect you to keep you from feeling in to being in harm and keep you out of danger but <clears throat> the problem unfortunately is that when if you allow your parts to or well if if you become triggered with your parts and the adult is blended with these parts, it affects your ability to live a, a life that is, you know, happy and productive and uh, like in a work 
in a professional manner, being being able to maintain a successful work life. Because if you're in a situation that causes, like if work-wise, if you're in a location or you're in a job that has triggers and causes you to experience these flashbacks to your to your trauma from your past, it's gonna soon make it very difficult, if not impossible, to maintain the ability to do your work. And if nothing is taken care of, you know, nothing is done about it, and you don't get any help, you're you're gonna probably end up losing your job because you don't, you just can't mentally put in the effort and the energy and the emotion to be any good at your job. And there's a good chance that you're probably going to end up having to take time away, either temporarily or maybe even permanently, if you're unable to re- to make any progress and and heal your system, so that when you do go back to working, at some point, hopefully you won't be able, you won't have those uh, triggers and re-experience their, the flashbacks and once again have it get in the way of being able to do your job properly. So you end up having to take time off in order to deal that because you're not safe. You don't you don't feel as an adult or as as your child parts you don't feel safe in that kind of a situation and you like i've said already you need that safety that feeling of safety in order to be able to live your life in a in a way that is productive is successful and that you can have a meaningful relationship or a meaningful job and get benefit out of it if you don't have that safety, it's very difficult to do that. And I do know from personal experience, like both in past relationships and in work environment, I have been in situations where I didn't feel safe at all. I I didn't know at that time that I was dealing with a complex post-traumatic stress disorder trigger. I I know I, I didn't really have any way of identifying it other than I felt in danger or I felt scared. And so it was preventing me from being able to be even stay there or to be able to to do the work without getting triggered and getting scared and you know, wanting to just run away from the job and leave it forever. When it came to like my relationship I instead of running, I did whatever I could um, to like a bargaining, right? Like um, the uh, the f- fight, flight, freeze. There's also the fawn, the the four Fs when it comes to that. I was basically doing th- or acting in a certain way, or be and changing my behavior to hopefully at all costs avoid the the behavior from my partner to eliminate or you know hopefully avoid getting triggered and experiencing my like my flashback to the trauma and you know i wanted to be i wanted to feel safe so it's almost like i was i was doing i was not being authentic and not being real to myself or to the my partner in the past so that I could maintain the relationship but a lot of that was due to a real poor level of self-confidence and not believing that I deserved any better um, my thoughts were is that I didn't think I was going to get anything or be with someone who would be better for me or that I deserved anything better so it was like I had made a decision as a person as, you know, as a whole, that I would, you know, allow myself to be manipulated in a way that was beneficial, even though it was pr- it was very harmful. In when you when you actually look at it, it was harmful to me, uh, to my system, and it it would end up really damaging my ability to have 
relationships or start or get involved or even try to be in a relationship because of the fact that I was every time I would try or I would you know want to look at dating somebody or even meeting a, a woman like at a bar or something the multiple things would occur right like I would I would be overcompensating for my self confident lack of self confidence so I like I said end up talking way too much and or doing behaviors that was not you know not appropriate like I mean like interrupting uh, saying things that were childish like I un unknowingly I was doing this I didn't I didn't really know that I was being childish at the moment but there was there were a number of things that I would say or behaviors or actions that I would take that would turn off or turn away that person and they would want they really wouldn't want anything to do with me but I was doing this out of a sense of safety I was trying to feel safe in the environment because there was a lot of uh, potential triggers that could come from there like I could there was anxiety triggers there was I had I was always getting nervous I would be afraid of making errors making mistakes so I would over I would overthink stuff and overthink my actions and instead of saying something that could be taken as genuine or or authentic i would it's like i was faking it or i was over talking and being sound like someone who never listens and it's just all about yourself all about me about you know not about the person that i was sitting across from i wouldn't i have of course that's the problem is that you you trying to make yourself feel safe and avoid getting any triggers like from the, your experience but at the same time i was damaging any kind of potential future relationship or friendship in that matter and i ended up doing that i remember in past employee like jobs that i had in in my past there were times that my behavior or my actions were deemed to be the incorrect action or an inappropriate uh, way of doing something work related but it was my own avoidance to be to make myself feel safe and secure that it was unknowingly doing i was unknowingly causing harm to my career or to my future because of those behaviors so it's a delicate and very complex situation and without the proper help from a therapist and and you know doing the work and processing with your system it can be very difficult if not impossible to both feel safe but make the correct and the and the right choices for yourself and a lot of that is getting your parts to trust you like doing the doing the processing under learning about your the parts that you have in your with you and understanding who they are what they're about and then over time getting to them uh, earning their trust so that in the future you can at some point feel safe but also behave as an adult and say adult like things and make adult like choices and not mess up something that is potentially really amazing or that can be amazing whether in any in any way of life if you can get your parts to trust you then you're you're on you're in a much better position than if you don't realize that you're having this trauma and you avoid and do things in a certain way to avoid it and causing problems in the on the other side quite quite complex and it's not a good thing to if you don't have the proper help you can't really make any progress and you're going to end up just making the same mistakes over and over okay let's keep going here um Okay, so continuing on with the help. Uh, word and deed, feeling safe around others, especially if we've been betrayed or abused, is not going to come easy, and nor should it. 
There are people out there who will pretend they care about us or love us only as a challenge to their ego. The harder our trust is to gain, the more of a challenge we can become. If we've taken time to focus on ourselves and on recognizing what makes us feel safe, the people we choose to have in our lives will also change. Challenges aren't accepted. Agendas are seen through. What identifies trust and safety to us now includes not only what a person is saying, but that their actions are consistent as well. Self-soothing. One of the most important things a person can do to help empower themselves and regain a sense of safety is to learn self-soothing tools. In a video by the National Institute for the Clinical Application of Behavior Medicine, NICABM, Dr. Peter, Peter Levine teaches two very simple techniques that anyone can do. Um, this is on YouTube. Obviously, there's no point in playing it right here because you might not be able to hear it. But if you are interested in the video, there is this is online. You can look up Peter Levine on YouTube and you can watch this video. I'll put a link in the in the description of the video. Okay, because consistency is key, doing these type of self-soothing skills can help build a sense of safety, especially if feeling threatened or triggered. Other common skills include the 5-4-3-2-1 method, which is based on grounding techniques. We've actually discussed that in the past. It's basically doing like the five senses where you can like you choose five uh colors to find like for the visual then the four senses of sound the three senses of touch the two senses of like you could or smell which you know whatever works best for you so it's the same method so it's your grounding techniques okay when feeling unsafe look to your immediate environment for five things you can see and label them out loud four things you can touch and touch them while labeling them out loud see exactly and so on it's a uh, yeah it learning to feel safe after trauma is learning to thrive after having lived on survival mode for so long or for too long yes it yeah this is one of those things that if you're not equipped well with the proper tools and the means to help yourself when you are feeling triggered it's very difficult to work your way past them and knowing the signs of your triggers and knowing how it works and it, like how they how they appear is definitely very helpful because then it allows you to when you are feeling the signs like the senses that are in your body or you're you're noticing those physical signs or the mental signs that you're about to that you are having a trigger and you're becoming blended with your system if you have the correct and the right tools to use it is it can be a lot easier for you to stop yourself become unblended with that part or parts and then do the four-step process so that you can identify with that part find out exactly what like feel the emotions that they are expressing and what they're feeling so that you can connect with them build that neural connection and you know pathway in your mind and then you know you're listening to the part and you're and you're getting the information you're you're basically hearing what what they're feeling tell they're going to tell you if they if they are trusting you they're going to tell you how they feel they're going to explain you know who they are like if you haven't established any kind of identif identification or identity with that part they're gonna they're gonna hopefully they'll tell you who who they are what their trauma is what they're from where they were born and then if eventually if you do the work and you do it right and you are consistent with it you will be able to get the opportunity to update that part and show them you know that you're that it you know you you appreciate and you're thankful for their for what they're doing for you that they're protecting you but you're also going to like you want them so that in the next time like i've discussed before the next time is that you do happen to get a trigger 
and you feel those flashbacks that you're going to be you're going to have a much better opportunity to come out of it quicker and be able to update them faster and and heal like a better chance of healing and getting moving forward in your progress to a, a better happier safer life if you're and the key to being able to do that successfully I think there's a number of things that are, are definitely important when it comes to this, but safety is definitely one of the highest rec- you know, requisites in order to th- for this to be successful. Because if you're safe, if you feel safe, whether it's in the environment you're in, um, your workplace, if you're in a relationship and you feel safe and you and you have that experience of safety and trust with that person, it you have. The, since the ability and you f- and you have that chance and the opportunity to work with your system and do the updating and and gain their trust more and eventually c- get those neural pathways those connections built more and more so that eventually at some point you'll be it, it'll be like you are one again and whenever you do have that flashback to your your trauma you'll be able to stay as the adult and be able to work through it and then to untrigger you know to unblend yourself or to work through that trigger so that you can feel safe and not put yourself in harm's way or not you know gain that that feeling of safety again which is obviously very difficult when you're not in a safe mode or a safe location or or around people who are unsafe my when it comes to how i feel safe it's difficult when if if you haven't done a lot of work and you're you know you may be seeing a therapist a couple every two weeks and especially if you're if you are new into it it can be difficult to build that sense of safety it you really have to work hard to gain that that feeling at first and then when you when you move on and you are starting to grow and you're gaining like safety experience and you're learning to your parts are learning to trust you you will find it easier to find that space or that sense of safety like myself i the fact that i've i have such a hard time trusting people i'm i always have this i have i always seem to like my parts are always seeming to be highly triggered or it takes it takes very little to trigger them and there's this there is always a sense of skepticism with anyone um even when i feel like i go out and i and i meet up with some with some friends or or one friend or maybe a group uh even even if I have a sense of safety, like I feel safe, there's it's it it never really seems to be a hundred percent. Like the, it it may be like seventy percent, eighty percent of feeling safety, but there's always a part. Like I may not base it. I'm not necessarily blended with the part. There could be a trigger, and I'm not completely aware that I'm feel I am triggered so there's a there's always or I seem to always be a sense of skepticism um being wary being a like uh, always questioning what the person would be thinking or how their their actions their movements uh it could it would take very little for for something to cause the trigger and to to not feel totally safe and in certain locations uh like there are a lot of locations that i go to that or that i have gone to in the past sorry where you don't know right away when you when you are approaching it if it's like someone like me who doesn't have a lot of experience when it comes to recognizing my triggers and being aware and learning to unblend from them or from my parts excuse me I don't necessarily know or I haven't in the past known that 
the location that I'm going to or the group I'm going to be with is going to cause me to become triggered and have a flashback. And to getting to the root cause of it is definitely the main goal, but it's so difficult when you don't have a lot of experience with this or knowing how to take care of it properly, like how to work with your system in an efficient way that is quick and, you know, especially if your parts don't trust you, it's extremely difficult. So anyway, um, yeah, I, I remember going out with friends and the idea was to go out to the, like a nightclub. I, I had, didn't do this very often, clearly, but there were, there have been a few times where I would go with my friends or a friend or two to like a, like a bar that when there was music and dancing in a nightclub type of atmosphere. And when I got there, it was like subtle at first because my system and the way I am, I like look around. I'm, I'm, I'm like looking at everything, watching everything. I, my eye is on all that I can see and find and I'm, I have a, difficult, a very difficult time kind of focusing on what's going on with me and with my friends. So instead of enjoying the time spent with my friend or friends, I would be like hyper vigilant with everything. I would be all over the place. My eyes would be everywhere. The, my, the sounds that I'd be hearing would always be distracting me. I'd always be getting carried off. Uh, with with what's what was happening sudden noises would definitely be very uh, agitating so i could i could get triggered by stuff like that uh the environment just to me never felt safe there was never a sense of, of proper safety where i could feel you know safe in my with myself and safe with my friends and because i also didn't want to like disappoint my friends or make them think that I was like un, you know socially inadequate or or not wanting to be social at all I would I would more often than not fake my way through it and try to pretend although I don't think I was exactly the best when it came to faking it and saying you know doing the right actions and behaviors to make myself look like I was enjoying myself um there was the best thing i can there's a really good example uh in 2006 i was with uh this girl we weren't dating or anything we were just friends we were hanging out and she was newly into a new relationship with this with this gentleman and we went to a bar on the west side of the city and i just remember I walked in and immediately I felt very uncomfortable physically, mentally. I just wasn't enjoying myself. And I remember sitting at the t at the table while the two of them were on the floor dancing, drinking my drink, and all I could think about was this just doesn't feel right. I don't like this. This is this is completely awkward and this is triggering. And I, I didn't know triggering back then, of course, but that's basically the sensation and the and the feeling that I was getting. And I think I sat there for twenty minutes. I don't know for sure, but I I got so disturbed and so triggered by the the environment and the situation that I was in that I got up and left I didn't say anything to anybody like I didn't I didn't go up to them and say I don't feel good about this I need to go I just freaked out and I literally got up and went I went out the door got into my car I remember just feeling really strange and really just not myself clearly I was in a triggered state and I went home and I am sure that the the two of them were probably really kind of wondering what the hell happened to me. And I don't remember the details. I, I can't remember if I said if I said anything to them or if there was any discussion after or whatever, but it, yeah, I, I had no sense of safety. I felt in a very strange and scary location and I was 
mentally just not feeling safe whatsoever. And I, I did take care of it. I know I wasn't like, because I was blended and I was triggered my to no unknown to me, the child parts that were triggered at the time don't know the proper social etiquette that, you know, if you're feeling uncomfortable, make sure you go tell them, you know, tell your friends that you're not feeling right, that you want to go home. This isn't working. That's the proper thing that you should do. But because I was triggered with the part, I didn't behave in an, in an adult way. Instead, I was a scared child and I walked out the door in order to get relief and to feel normal, to feel whole, to be safe again. Yeah, it, it's just one of those things that I've I have done a number of times where instead of telling like feeling as the adult and saying to someone or to whoever I'm with this doesn't feel right I'm feeling you know it, I don't think I'm going to say to someone I'm feeling triggered um I would say to them, I don't feel good. This place is giving me the creeps or something or, you know, and I would ask if I could go or take out, take, go outside, take a walk, maybe take a break. Um, and I'm sure that they would understand, but because I didn't have any kind of relationship or any trust with my system back then, it, the child part took over completely and deserted them instead of, to letting them know. Eh, today, I think if I was, first off, I don't think I'd put myself in a situation like that to begin with because I I know too well now in my later years that something like that is not something for, that I enjoy. I can't pretend to go into a loud nightclub or somewhere that feels really uncomfortable and pretend to walk and to go through it and put myself through this torture and uncomfortable feeling and that feeling of not being safe i would just not go but in in today's world if i went to a location and i didn't know like i had no idea that it was going to be a location that would make me feel unsafe i would be a lot more likely capable of telling the people I'm with that this isn't this doesn't feel good that I'm not enjoying myself and that I'd like to go or I'd like to take a break or something that would be in an adult response that would be adequate for them so that they wouldn't feel like I'm just abandoning them or being uh, rude or and a jerk or something and just taking off I would I would more than likely make the correct take the correct steps in course of action so that they would understand that I'm not feeling right this doesn't feel good to me and that I would and they would be accepting of it I would you know you would certainly hope that your friends would be accepting of a, of a decision like this and wouldn't hold anything like that against you or make you feel bad or that or resent the fact that you didn't want to be there but that's not that's not something that you should worry about. If if your friends are going to behave that way, clearly they're not really friends because a, fr a true friend would understand and would be compassionate and show you support and say, okay, that's not a problem. I get that this isn't the, a place that you really feel comfortable at. That's okay. And they would help you. They would do some. They would try to help comfort you, or they would, maybe they would say, "Okay, I understand. Um, let's go somewhere else." Or they would, maybe one of them would come and go on a walk with you to calm, help keep you calm or to keep you feel safe. That's that's an important thing. And I do have friends like that. I yeah, there are definitely a number. Of, like I have, I think it's like three or four really, really good friends that if something like that did happen, I feel completely safe to trust them and to be able to tell them that I'm not feeling comfortable in this situation and that I would like to go or I'd like to find an alternative way to, to hang out with them. They would, they would do it. And I feel safe with them. I, I don't feel a sense of, of, triggers like 
there's no guarantee there might something uncontrollable may trigger me at some, for some reason if it when it occurs but at least i feel safe in the environment and safe with the people that i'm with i feel like for the most part nine like 99 of the time i do feel safe in my relationship that you know like i'm i don't i don't feel in danger because of her uh i don't i don't get scared and run off like there are situations due to my cptsd and due to my adhd that does cause grief and frustration and anger and i get i get uh, my anxiety does act up a lot my part my anxiety part does come online and i get blended with it but when i'm the adult and i'm in an adult situation i do feel safe i feel comfortable and i trust her with my life and with everything it's i have things that i need to work on in order to you know more often than not not uh, you know not have that triggered feeling and that triggered experience that i get and so that i can feel even more safe around or with her doing things and, and activities and not feel scared uh, because of a trigger or some or an external in- environment or an event or a, a flashback from a past relationship or past situation that can cause it. I don't want, you know, nobody wants to obviously feel that. And the only way to successfully get better is to do the work you know processing with that part i i do do the work i admit that i'm not necessarily doing as much work as i can but i am looking for different ways of getting help for it Uh, i did do a session um actually the show that i was on um the self-sabotaging segas with Jenea Barnes I actually did do a session with her and talked about my anxiety part with her and we went through a couple hours of of some work just to get an experience of what she does and it showed me a lot like it, it really gave me a better and much clearer understanding of exactly what my of this anxiety part and as a matter of fact the this is going to be really cool for me um i am this is going to be done after the recording because i am recording this earlier as you are aware but i have a hypnotherapist hypnotherapy session with a woman from medicine hat alberta which is about five or so hours south of where i live and it's going to it's going to be a very different experience i've never been hypnotized before uh definitely not for a therapy session uh to help but i am i am doing this for the benefit of my health my system and i'm also doing this to benefit my relationship Uh, i want to i want to get i want to feel better i want to feel healing and i want to have better relationship and a better trust with my system especially with this anxiety part i want to f- i want to be able to at some point have enough trust with this part that i'll be able to know when i'm feeling the trigger when i'm feeling this anxiety that i'll be able to be the one in control and not get triggered to the point where my behavior is childlike and and is inappropriate and is potentially damaging i want to be able to get to a point where i can be the adult in this situ in in every sort of situation that could be potentially unsafe for me and doing the hypnotherapy is going to be a step in the right direction to feeling safer even with if i do feel anxiety i will feel safe enough to be honest to be true to do to know the steps that i need to take in order to to not be triggered or at least if i do get triggered i'll be able to stop myself and 
step away and do the correct and do the work like you know ground and and unblend from this part and do the and and listen to it and update and you know, hopefully update it so that this the occurrences will be less and less and less and a lot less um you know damaging for me and or stressful and triggering so that in the future it won't hopefully i won't have to really be too concerned if i do get triggered due to a, an anxiety issue like that's the ultimate goal is to be able to be the adult and to feel safe and to feel confident and content in my life and in my body both mentally and physically so that I can be happy and be successful and feel that I am loved and that I am safe in my environment. That is important to me. I don't want to, I really don't want to continue living a life where anxiety controls my abilities to do the right thing or to do, to make decisions and to have a child part being online and being triggered caught you know making and having the adult blended with that part and making childish like decisions that are very harmful and heck even making my partner feel unsafe i that's the last thing that i would want and i'm i know that anybody else would want the same thing so yeah like this these are ways to help you know like going to a therapist is is the best way and the most reliable way to get you know on the track to healing and then finding alternative means like additional help is always good there's nothing wrong with with going and finding more ways of of working with your system um, doing the work, processing on a regular basis, truly listening to your parts and gaining their trust and learning about who they are and why they're here to protect you and the benefit of, the, of what your part has done for you your entire life. All these steps lead towards eventual healing and feeling safer, more safe in your, in your life and in your, where you are, who you're with. And one day, hopefully, you'll be able to, you know, have a really happy, safe, and, you know, well, just feeling good and not, not worrying, not having to deal with uh, flashbacks and, and having child parts come online. Being in control and being the one that's, that is the, that's doing the talking and, and making decisions in your life is is going to be much better than having a child part be blended with the adult and having childlike behaviors and decisions being made in your life. You don't want that. Nobody really wants to have that ultimately. All right. Uh, I guess that is it for today, for this episode. Um, that was a lot. Uh, it's been a while since I've made a bit of a longer episode. Um, this is, I'm, I have to say, I am looking forward to the hypnotherapy. Uh, it will already have been done by the time this episode ha has released or is published to the public. If you have any questions regarding it, or if you are curious about the hypnotherapy, you can ask me, you could also look it up online. Uh, there's plenty of different therapists out there that are available for this kind of procedure if you if something you'd seriously want to look into uh yeah i'm looking forward to it i think it's going to be fantastic and i think it's going to be of great benefit to me uh, to help make my life feel safer and heal my system and or towards healing my system i should say it's going to be fun um i will give you a bit of an update uh, in the next episode next week to let you know how it went and maybe do a bit of a run out uh, run through of it I'm not going to talk about it too much because um, I don't know exactly how it's going to go and for all I know it might not be something that I'm willing to discuss with the public but I might discuss it briefly just to let you know how the experience was for me 
I've never been hypnotized before, just so you know. Uh, I'm, it is making me nervous, but I am definitely excited for it. Okay, uh, I'm on Twitter at ADHD and CPTSD. Please give me a shout. Come and follow me. Uh, I love talking about things. Um, I am open to discussing whatever you feel like. Honestly, um, my website is www.livingwithadhdandcptsd.ca. I have my Facebook page. You can find me on there. Same name. Uh, I am on Patreon, so if you want to support me, you can subscribe, and I have a lot of interesting things on Patreon that you could find. Uh, if you want to check out the Sabotaging Sagas episode that I did with Janaea Barnes, it is on my YouTube page. It's obviously Living with ADHD and CPTSD on YouTube. The video is there. It was about an hour long and it's really interesting you get another perspective from a different person who has also dealt with trauma and their experiences and how they deal with it and how they help their parts in their system and you get a chance to see me uh, in on camera which is really cool speaking of YouTube um, I'm just about ready I have actually got a few ideas as far as how what my format is going to be on YouTube the idea I'm looking at is talking with other people on YouTube and other podcasters about CPTSD with them and their life experiences, how they deal with CPTSD, the processing they do, their their own unique challenges and how they help their system. I'm, I'm hoping to do that. Uh, I don't know how often it will occur. I'm, tr I'm gonna try for maybe uh, one episode a week, maybe two. Uh, well, every I'm sorry, I mean every other week, and I really hope this will be an exciting venture. I'm really looking forward to it, and I just need to get it set up so that it's it works well for everybody involved. So, um, looking looking forward to that. I hope you will be too. Yeah, that's all for today, guys and gals. Um, this is going to be out on New Year's Day, so I have you guys, I hope you all have a very happy and safe 2022, and hopefully this pandemic ends soon so we can start getting back to normal life like it was back in 2019. It's hard to believe that it's been that long. Okay, everybody, have a great week, and I shall talk to you later. Bye. Bye.